Hi, Potter people. Tonight's episode is going to be all about high school sports. Not really. We did take a bunch of coverage of that last week with a uh, fair gets mess. Anyway, almost agreement. Almost in agreement at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Go to the website, almost While you're there, check out Hollerboo24. There's a link on the page there. Uh, October 26th, we're doing a rock and roll show, Soapbox Derby Street Fair. Fun, great event for one and all. There will be a kid zone, so you guys, those unions that got some kids that want to get them out and play, we're going to have some bounce houses and some cool, fun activities for the kids as well. So come out and join us. It's going to be a great time. If you're a vendor or a food truck or a crazy person who wants to drive a Soapbox Derby car, there is still time to register if you're in the market to have a good time like that. Uh, we are on your favorite podcast providers. Like us, follow us, friend us, share us, do whatever that is on all your social media people. Hit us up. Let us know. Almost in agreement at gmail.com. Um, some fun, exciting city news. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the I-75 shooter guy's dead. Here's a win. Anyway, we'll get a, we'll talk about that amongst other stuff. And, uh, like I said, we will touch on high school football for just a second. Here we go. Hi, friend. Hey, hey, hey. How you do? I be. He be. Anything new and exciting? No, nothing crazy. Beating up your new car, I hear, so. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, a, that's, <laughs> I mean, I've done it too. Everybody does it. They get that new car and then whatever the first little thing is, like they thunk the door getting out and they're, damn it. Yeah. Cause they haven't, there's no scratches yet. I don't want any more. That's already got a few scratches. Oh, that's the worst. I need a, uh, I need a bath. Uh, so yeah, so we ended up at the, uh, West High School versus Central football game for a little bit tonight. Uh, $10 to get in the door. Damn. Yeah. Not only that, ten dollars to get in the door with like three minutes left to play in the first half. Like we figured, if we showed up late, maybe they cut the price a little bit. Right, and it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> so I uh, walk up to the thing, and I actually happened to have some cash on me. I had twenty nine dollars in cash, and I was like, uh, "We got two and a half people," uh, because the other kid, the other kid, the the oldest kid was in there doing a thing for school, and so the younger kid was with us, and uh, so we got two and a half people. And they're like, "It's ten bucks each." I was like, "Well, I got twenty nine. I can go over. They have a different line for credit cards. And I was like, well, I, I can go over there. It's not a big deal. I don't really care. And they're like, well, that line's broken. And I was like, well, so 29 bucks it is. <laughs> so I just gave them it. They handed me the tickets. And it's really, it was an awkward little combination of things. Like, I understand it because they sell the tickets elsewhere, like to the students or however they do that kind of stuff. But like, I literally, she hands me these tickets and like, I don't even complete turn around and the guy takes the tickets out of my hands and then we walk in. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, we could have just skipped that step. You could have been like, hey, they paid, and I could walk by, but whatever. If there's process. There's a process to this. I'm not complaining about that. So, yeah, uh, so as a, uh, like any good drug dealer, the band programs at the local schools are uh, giving the first one away free. So, basically, they did this. This is something they started a few years ago, apparently. The eighth grade band in the middle school um, does a field trip to one of the feeder high schools. And does some stuff with the high school band at the football game, um, including get on the field and played some stand, played some sand tunes on the field for a halftime show. Um, and so it's just like it's a way to get to to give the kids a chance to see what the high school band experience is like, especially in marching band and football and stuff like that, without having to, to actually be in the band in high school to figure out that they hate it. Yeah, which at least on uh, on the initial review, my eldest hates it. He will not be doing marching band in high school. Huh. Um, we'll see, but, uh, you ready to feel really old? Why not? Okay. So in your recollection of going to, uh, of like all the, like going to games and all the visiting bands and everybody plays their, you know, their shows, like nobody played modern music, right? There's always like my recollection. I don't remember anybody playing like, you know, when we were in high school, nobody was playing a Nirvana show or, uh, I think one school did a Metallica show, which semi recent but there's like yeah you know, we did blues brothers one year yeah, and i think one of those songs was that newer song by eric clapton changed the world yeah that was probably like the most modern song i remember doing yeah but like right stand tunes some of the stand tunes we did some more modern stuff but like, no this was this part of the right, show i know, I know i'm, oh, okay. I'm agree with you i'm just saying but like yes yeah, some of the stand tunes are modern but usually like most of the field shows are usually either stuff that's like old school marching band john philip Sousa style stuff um, or it's some sort of if it's if it's in the pop music genre, it's usually a little bit older. Typically, that's okay. it. Yeah, it's probably like a right thing. It's probably cheaper to get slightly older songs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the rule really is, but you're ready. You, so this is the part where you get to feel old. Central Central High School was the visiting band, right? They did a radio hit show. That's cool. 
I didn't recognize it. They only had like 25 kids in the band. It was really hard to understand what they were doing. It's early in the season. They're still working their show out. I get it, but they had a pretty good pit, but it was weird. I don't know. I haven't been to a marching. I, I haven't been to a marching thing that I wasn't in in a long time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was our experience there. It was fun. It was interesting. All the, apparently there's some sort of construction worker theme thing that goes on with the West High School student section. Bunch of these kids walking around with like construction vests on and hard hats. Don't know what it was. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, like say, like I was joking. Like I saw one of the other parents that I've been that's a neighbor and we've been friends or you know acquaintances or whatever you want to call it for years. Ran to him. It's like, what's going on with the construction kids? He's like, I don't know. That's what the, that's what the student section's doing. He's like, okay. I was like, I don't. I never got to do it. We. I. 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 I, 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 I that's a poor way to say it. I never did any of that because I was always in the band and so I was always at the game. I didn't have a choice. Right. You know, this is what we wore to the game. Um, and so anyway, it was, I, I found it fun. Both the kids hated it. Uh, the wife enjoyed the band parts of it, but you know, it was a little warmer. It's still so fucking hot. When's it going to cool off? Uh, I don't but, know. Like this weekend is like the solstice, right? Like some, one of these t- t- tomorrow, the day after. I think so. Like it's officially the first day of fall and it's going to be 80 something degrees. I think it's supposed to be like 21st or something. Uh, we should have canceled this show tonight. We should have gone to the Wallen show. So maybe tomorrow. Is that tonight or tomorrow? It's tonight and Sunday. He's doing two shows. Okay, cool. My understanding of his of his weekend plan is he's literally playing here tonight in Nayland Stadium, and he's flying to Norman, Oklahoma to watch the UT play Oklahoma, and then he's flying back here to play Nayland Stadium again. Which that wasn't added. They added one. I, don't, I think. I think they added the Sunday night show. I don't I think, think so. That, yeah. I don't think that was originally on the docket. I had it. I saw some story that he was donating. It was like one hundred fifty thousand dollars to. It's like whatever school he went to here. I want to say it was like Central or no, I think Gibbs. I think it might have been where he went. Yeah, he's uh, but his uh, two dollars a ticket. His foundation, I guess, was donating a bunch of money to the to that community. I think it was going to go to like the the Ruritan Park in that area. Cool. I mean, he's got his, he's got a little combination of things. He's like, that's a cool thing to do, but he also got arrested in Nashville. I was about to say, yeah, wasn't he the guy that th- yeah. threw a fucking stool threw a, off threw a, the roof? Threw a chair off the roof, off one of the roof bars downtown in Nashville, yeah. Um, one of the honky tonks. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Like, I'm excited. I'm glad that they're doing it. Like, I'm glad that they're using Nayland for more than just football games. As much as I like to hate on UT for stuff. If we're, if we have, if there is an event, there are only, there are only a handful of artists in the world that could do a tour that or that medicine. Well, yeah, there's probably only like two or three artists in the world that could do a tour of stadiums. My understanding is these are just one-offs. This isn't part of a tour for him. This is just literally, he wanted to do a home show. Hmm. Um, but there's not many people that could do it that have a big enough fan base. Cause I'm sure I, I, I'm sure that the data is out there somewhere. I'm sure that his production company is paying the university of Tennessee a good sum of money. To rent it, to rent for it day. for the day. There's there's some arrangement in there, whether it's a percentage of ticket sales or uh, a fixed number per ticket sold or whatever it is. The university is getting a goodly sum from this, or the sport, or the, the athletic department probably, not the university at large. Hopefully, well, they're at least getting the concessions. But uh, well, usually, most most venues, it's the other way. Most venues, that's the, one of the negotiations, is that the artist gets a percentage of the. The concession sales. Concession sales are property of the venue, but a lot of venues or a lot of artists, when booking, they'll be like, "Okay, we will pay X number of dollars for rental, but we get ten percent of the concessions." It's one of the reasons why, before alcohol got into campus, that artists didn't like to play Thompson, because back in the day, Thompson, like all campus, was fully dry, and so acts didn't like to come to Knoxville because they were too big to play the Civic. But Thompson couldn't, like, they didn't make enough money off of Thompson because they didn't right. get the concession sales sucked. So because hot dog alcohol. and popcorn, <laughs> right? They got they got their cut of concession sales, but you know, it's not the same. It's it's probably it's probably you know a half to a quarter of what it is with alcohol service now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm good on it. Uh, the city is uh, has agreed to pay like. Seven hundred thousand dollars to an engineering firm to reinspect the Gay Street Bridge to get these very specific problems, and then present uh, how much it's going to cost to fix it. Yeah, um, which seems like a lot of money for the inspection part. I understand it's a it's a 
highly skilled set of things. One, you're the engi- you're you're an engineer smart enough to know that, but two, you're also hanging off this hundred foot bridge over a river. Like it's a it's a. Right, I'm assuming that, that's an inspection of like top to bottom. Yeah, that's going to be every square inch and in, in this, that, and the other. Uh, so you know, we'll see. Um, I'm I I. I I'm not sure if I feel good about myself or not in the colloquy. Um, a couple of the more progressive minded people, uh, had started, uh, opining on their wish to just turn it into a pedestrian only bridge. And I was like, am I a leftist? I might be a leftist because I totally agree with them right now. And so we went back. I, 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 I just, I just, uh, um, spectated on that conversation. Yeah. Um, but then they also said they wanted to put an electric train that would run across it down to Severe Avenue. It's like, okay, you are a communist. I get it. Oh, I think a, a trolley on that stretch wouldn't be the worst idea as much as they're building up that area kind of further down. Yeah. They can essentially take that and go all the way to the other end of K, K Street. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah, sure. You go, I mean, I would like it to go all the way up to. I, mean, I think that was one, one of the original trolley lines used to be. Yeah, you, you know, could run, at least went down K Street. You could run it all the way up to the holler. That'd be nice. I'd love it. Yeah. Go. Jackson, I don't know. Yeah, just kind of turn down and go through the old city, and then come up to come up central through the hollow. That'd be nice. I'd be down with that. Oh, speaking of uh, public transit, uh, cat bus system is floating a zero cash system. I think they've already started it. They've got them. No, uh, they're 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 pl- that's what they want to do. There's a there's a public meeting or whatever this coming week. Ah. Um, where they're going to lay it out specifically. Like some of it makes sense. Like honestly, like you know. One of the things that they can do on with a cashless system, since everything is some sort of card based, you know, uh, what it what what they can end up doing is like you can go, you can hop on the bus, run your card, hop on a different bus, run your card, hop on a bus, run a different card, and so what all those transactions will get just kind of set aside, and then at the end of the day, they run all the transactions, and they won't run a single transaction on a single person for more than a certain amount. Because you can go, you can get a day pass on cat buses and jump around and do whatever you want. And yeah. so basically, it automatically makes people get like you. You automatically get a day pass if you get on enough buses in one day. So you don't have to worry about you know. Well, it's a dollar a ride, and I got on ten buses. I could have got a day pass for five bucks and got on ten buses. Yeah, it's just going to max. It, it maxes the card run at five dollars a day. And then also, I think they said that you know they have a monthly pass that's like twenty five bucks. If you have enough days where you use the maximum to equal that, then you won't you you still run your card every day, but they won't charge your card once you hit a monthly pass level. But there's also a ton of people who don't have access to cards and stuff like that, or to, yeah. to the ability to load a card if they need to and stuff right. like that. So I, I don't know I, I I hate a lot of this push towards cashless for a lot of reasons. Yeah, like well, when we went down to Variety Playhouse. Mm-hmm. For the that concert, the that the uh, that that place is to, in totality cashless. There is no option to pay cash for anything in there. I think Bridgestone was in the cashless. Yeah, it would no, it absolutely was because we talked. We, we joked with that one bartender about it. Um, that's becoming the norm. I'm assuming Nissan's the same way. I'm going there this weekend. Uh, we didn't go to concessions at West High School, so I don't know what theirs is. I know the Civic was starting to do it few years ago one of the last times i went to an ice bears game i mean i get it and i don't get it like it speeds up the line but i it, it speeds up the line it's it's it, it you is, also ran into some more like technical issues of like oh my card's not running right if the technical issue pops up it's much more problematic because you don't have a backup there's no there's no standard backup to get through it and my i mean to me the number one is it's like to, like i get it on the business perspective of it is a security thing you know, your your employees could steal product, but they can't steal cash. You know, and you got to think. You know, even with the Civic at what five thousand, like what's a packed out ice fairs game? Nah, I'm not sure. It's I don't not know many. It's that much. Yeah, thirty five hundred, maybe. I mean, thirty five hundred people spending. You know, between the tickets, walking in the door, a couple beers and the popcorn, maybe nachos, maybe some random merch stuff like that. You know, thirty five thirty five hundred people spending. 50 bucks a piece average, you know, that's, uh, uh, I don't know what that number is right now. I thought, man, do the math for me. I was going to say a hundred bucks a piece. So a hundred bucks a piece would be 35, 
What, 100? Yeah. So $350,000. So if they're spending 50 bucks a piece, you have that. So uh, $175,000 in cash. Like that, a good chunk of that's cash. You know, $100,000 in cash. That's a lot of cash to have in one place. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, you know, do all you got to do to get that broke down at the end of the night and get it into, um, get it to the bank and whatever you do that way. Uh, not to mention if you're doing cash, you need to have, you know, with that level of stuff, you need to have thousands of dollars in bank to start the day. Right. So, you know, $175,000, $200,000 in cash sales plus maybe ten, fifteen grand in uh, starting cash for change and stuff like that. That's a lot of cash. You know, and so for security purposes, I could see how the venues like that. Um, you know, they're already overpricing everything they do anyway, so the uh, the credit card fees are kind of swallowed up and all that, and they're not really worried about the credit card fees. Yeah, and I've seen it. I've seen more places starting to do it. Uh, the tire shop that I got my tires at, they do. You know, if you want to run a card, it's a three percent additional Damn. charge. It's starting to become normal. Normal. I'm waiting on it. I've been waiting on it for a while. I cannot wait personally. It sucks, you know, because you come to my place and you buy some uh, some hemp gummies, and it'll be nine point two five percent sales tax, six percent hemp tax, and then a three percent surcharge for using your credit card. So you're looking at eighteen, nineteen, twenty percent add on. So your ten dollar things now twelve dollars. Yeah, that's that's rough. I don't I don't like that for my customers, and that's why I've been so hesitant to do it. But at the same time. You know, I'm, it's. I think we average like sixty five hundred bucks a month in credit card fees. There's got to be a better way. Yeah, cash dollar bills, bitches. I like cash. So anyway, that's uh random cash transaction news. Um, was the other attempt at Trump already happened? Did we already talk about that? Mm. The golf course thing. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, uh, Mr. Burchett is out there running his mouth about it again. Claiming conspiracy, which I actually agree with him on some level. Don't get mad. Um, I'm not on the DEI part of his conspiracy. I do agree. The, the problem is it's a it's a it's a super hypocritical thing from his perspective to blame it on the leftists and their dangerous rhetoric. I agree with him. I think when you're out there yelling and screaming that this person is a threat to democracy, he could be the end of America as we know it. Blah 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 blah. blah. That if if. If someone were so patriotic to actually be afraid that that is the truth, that this would be a logical solution to them, okay. But when Trump's also running around talking about Kamala, communist Kamala, and she's going to destroy America and stuff like that, you don't really get to play the, their dangerous rhetoric is what's getting me shot. Right. <clears throat> well, your dangerous rhetoric is what they're being dangerous rhetoric in reply to. So both of you stop it, yeah. and it, then we it, can have an argument. It lasted for about a day or two after the first attempt. Right. I, I was like, okay, like maybe we should like tone this down. Look, the conspiracy I have that I think is the truth, like this is my real, this is how I truly feel about it. I think the Secret Service sucks. They suck at their job. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a Trump thing. I don't think there's like some intent that they're less careful with Trump than they are with other candidates. I think they, I, I did read a story that like particularly there is a system that they have in place where like the sitting president and their immediate family has a certain number of people. Period. And like, as you get further away from being the president, it goes down. Yeah. I've heard so, stories in years past about them being kind of like underfunded and understaffed. And right, a lot right. of them are working like, you know, 60 days straight or whatever. Right. And it's an organization that's, that's had it, had stuff added to their to-do list outside of their original. I mean, hell, their original core function is not to protect people. They were established to do what? Don't know. Their, their counterfeit money. Yeah, their establishment was like was currency regulation and kind of like you know in, investigating counterfeits and stuff like that. That was what they were established to do. I don't know exactly when and where it, they rolled them into the protection racket, which is fine. I'm not saying they should or shouldn't have whether they or but again, but they've had other stuff that they've added to their list of things to do over time with an underfunded, understaffed organization asking them to do more. They've got to give it up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of it's you know if there's any kind of like planned event, you got you're there two or three days ahead of time, like doing reconnaissance, basically. Right. Well, that's the thing about this golf course one, the pit that 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 kind of lends to my argument and my like the 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 one of the stories I read on it is <clears throat> this spot where this guy had set up his little thing. He was there for like twelve hours. He was there for twelve hours, which that's part one. Part two is that it was a known spot on the golf course. Like paparazzi would often go to that spot because it's one of the few spots where from outside the fence, 
all the growth and shrubbery and stuff was thin enough that you could get in there and get a picture. So if Trump or somebody else was playing around a golf and you wanted to catch a picture of them with whoever they're playing with or whatever, it was a known spot where the paparazzi would set up to take pictures. Yeah. And so like, if it's a known spot to the golf course, uh, probably to Trump for that matter and other people involved, like if it's a known spot that people can get close enough to, to see the president as they're going down the course, I would think the secret service would have been made aware of that. And I would think, and maybe they were, and maybe that was the solution. The, the, the guy that was the guy that shot at the dude, the secret service agent that shot in this event, um, you know, he may have been told that there is a spot on the seventh hole or whatever where people like where people will get into the fence area. It sometimes pops our and stuff, and maybe that's why he happened to catch it because he was looking over there because he was warned that that's a spot. And when he looked over there, he saw a rifle barrel, and so he shot at it. That might be why it happened. I don't. I haven't heard that officially. That's conjecture on my part. But the, the, again, the, the point being is, I think that I don't think the Ser- Secret Service is as good as the job as we have assumed they were. This, maybe it's a better way to put what I'm trying to say. Like, there's this assumption that we haven't had a real attempt on the president prior to this year since Reagan. I don't recall Obama. I mean, there was one. I think any. I'm sure there's been some random like thwarted ones that just never really like made the news, right? Because they never got to a level of like realistness that we've seen in this one. And, and again, that might be a good point too. This might be one of those things that the way the news cycle works now, like, like, I mean, the, the one in Pennsylvania has not happened since Reagan, right? Like he was hit by a bullet. The former president of the United States, current front runner for the GOP was shot barely, but shot nonetheless. Um, and that hasn't happened in a long time. Um, but yeah, this one, th- this one being a little different in, in kind. And I mean, both of them seem a little like the first guy is what I understand of. And I think we talked about this is like, he just wanted to shoot somebody famous in politics. When yeah, I still don't know if they found much motive. Like he had a list, but the list was, you know, it was both sides of the aisle. Right. It, it, like I said, it's just, he wanted to shoot somebody famous in politics. He didn't have a political motive other than killing somebody in politics is what it seemed like from the list and what little we've heard about it. I couldn't remember if there was much motive in it, and what they had found of like some, some notebook in his backpack or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then this new guy is like, apparently there was a Nikki Haley fan and, uh, also like real crazy on the Ukraine stuff, but also broke, but somehow flying to Ukraine and lived in Hawaii for a while. It's really confusing. Yeah. Like, but he had voted, he had voted in, I guess, Florida, wherever his like stateside house, mainland, I guess he would call it. Where his mainland house was, he had voted like in the past couple of elections, like recently. I think even right. even as recently as like this spring, I think he voted in some primaries and wherever his whatever home state was. But yeah, he was in like Hawaii for a couple of years, right? And he's been back and forth to Ukraine a couple yeah. times, apparently trying to like voted for Trump in 2016. Then apparently on like social media or something, you know, kind of took took blame for you know like I'll take some blame. Like you know, I was one of the people that. Put him vote, there. You know, they put him into power in 2016, but I guess you know, prior to 2020, he had already soured on him. Yeah, and so I think, like I said, I think he, I think, I think the Pennsylvania one made it a made the idea a possibility for this guy, and that's part of why we had a second one so close because I think it pointed out that the Secret Service wasn't as good as they thought as we thought they were, and so he said, "I might be able to pull this off." Instead of saying, "Man, I really want to," I don't know. Like, I certainly don't believe that, like, Nancy Pelosi hired anybody. Like, I don't believe that level of conspiracy from the left. Oh, cool. <laughs> but Pat I, yourself on the back for that one. Okay. I do think that I do I, I, I do agree with Burchett that the rhetoric is problematic. I don't agree with him that it's left only. This was what I was trying to get to. Gotcha. I, I, I do think that I, I think I think it met. I was talking to Matt Shears early in the week. And he said what you've said before, like, this a fucking cycle is too goddamn long. He's like, I want to be, he didn't say goddamn, but uh, it's too long. He's done. Like, I'm done with this. He's like, I want this election to be over already. You know, and especially for somebody like him, he already knows who he's voting for. There's no question. And so this is just, this is just, you know, rhetoric and bullshit to him at this right. point. I think I was reading today, there's some states where people are already voting. Yeah. I think in person. Yeah. North Carolina, but, I think starting. But they were saying that like a couple of these states, like there's still some like election laws that are like going through, going through court. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They could or could not. I, I would think this close to the election, they wouldn't implement some kind of law. Or I think once voting started, I don't think you can. Right. 
Um, I'm saying I'm not sure they can really change much if it's an ongoing election. Right, because I know there's still some fights where, where, where Kennedy's trying to get off about certain ballots and whatever. Um, but uh, on elections, bringing it back local, we have on – I don't, you don't, um, but city residents will have the two ballot amendments um, coming up. And uh, I heard a little bit of a uh, off the, yeah, off the record story. I, got, I heard that uh, when – this conversation had started before Elaine Davis had put it up to the house to make this to pass the state law to force the city to do it. That there was discussion within the city council and some of these state legislatures about whether or not we should, it, it, we should make these changes to make go to districted instead of this weird district uh, at large combo thing that they do. And the, what I was, what I was told was that the, the city council and the mayor's office were like, yeah, well, if, if this is something you think we need that needs to be done, then we will put that we will make that ballot initiative, and we will do a we will do a, a a charter amendment to put it on the ballot and let the people of Knoxville make a decision on this. And apparently, that's where the conversation left. And Briggs said, "Okay, then I won't do anything with it because Briggs was going to carry it. Uh, it was going to be Lane Davis and Briggs." And Briggs said, "Well, if that if you guys are going to do it, then I'm not going to make it a state thing because I don't think it needs to be a state thing or whatever," which I agree with. Um, but then Elaine Davis did it anyway, and then Briggs got somebody else to carry the Senate side of it for him. And so apparently the city council at large is kind of pissy about it because they 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 told the state that they would take care of it themselves, and the state said, okay, no, <laughs> do it because we made you, not because you volunteered to do it. Okay. Is that confusing? A little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so when the topic had come up, Elaine Davis locally, is, right at city council, right? Well, not at city council proper, but it, in the politicos of Knox County circles of people talking about it, that that Elaine Davis was planning on introducing this thing, and so there was some sort of conversation. She was going to introduce introduce this at the state level, right. right? And so there was some conversation because, as we know, if a house member introduces something, it has to have a Senate partner. And so Elaine Davis went to Briggs. Briggs said he would carry the Senate side for her if that's what she wanted to do. Um, and so these conversations start rolling. And basically the city council, in at least conversations with Briggs, um, individual city councilors and or some, I think it was one of those legislative breakfasts that they do every once in a while. Do you remember those? I've heard of them okay. happening, yes. Yeah, so, so all of the state reps that have Knox County seats – We'll get together, and then other elected officials and local people can come in and talk to them and stuff like that. Anyway, it's one of those things where they're all just kind of chit-chatting about shit. And so the the way it was described to me is that the city, for the city's sake, they said, we respect that this is something that you guys think should be done. If you guys are serious, we will make a – we will put a ballot – we will uh, do the uh, charter amendment process from the city council to add this ballot item, and then on the next election we'll have it. And so then Briggs says, okay, well, cool. If you guys are doing it, then I won't bother carrying it in, in the state. Elaine Davis, as far as I understand, said, uh, I'm doing it anyway. I'm new. I want to win something. Uh, and introduced it anyway. And uh, got uh, Briggs, as I understand it, Briggs got a different senator to carry the, the Senate partner bill. Right. And so basically the cities were upset that they weren't the ones that put the ballot item up, that the state is forcing them to put the ballot item up. It's just the it's the who got to say you have to do it part, that's the the tension. Okay. Because I agree, like I, I remember at the time when we were talking about it, my statement I believe at the time was, I agree with the intent of the law that the state is making. I disagree that the state is the one that should be doing it. The city should do this on their own. They should put this to their voters, and not the state shouldn't be the one making them do it. All right. Sounds like the city already kind of had that in motion for the past year or so. Correct. No. They didn't do it. They they the as soon as the state started doing it to force them to do it, they didn't bother doing it on their end. I guess they could have. They could have been like, "Well, let's let's roll this up real quick and have it, and then it makes the state look stupid." Um, but no, again, I, th- I thought the city had been working their way towards it for a while, but I may be misremembering. I think it's no. I mean, it seems to be like my the, the history of the of the argument um, is mostly an Eric Wider thing um, because of City District Three. But that was the SEMA Nick Cipero race, which was within the time frame that we've been doing this. So it's only been four years because Cipero won won the primary but lost the general. 
I know Deja was quoted in a, a local story that was talking about it. Yeah. I, I, again, I think I, I, if you, if, yeah, cause I think she, I think that was quoted that there was a city vote on it and she was the only one that voted no on it. Well, the city had to like, the city had to put something together to, to make the ballot like, okay. So the, or maybe that's what they were just right, on so, the ballot initiative. So functionally speaking, the city could have done nothing and come next year, the city charter is out of compliance with state law. And since it's out of compliance in state law, state law supersedes, the election would go to what the state is telling them that it has to do, even though the charter doesn't say it has to go that way. And so what the city did in the, over the last couple of um, city council meetings was they put a charter amendment in so that they could get the charter, uh, the, so that the city charter is in compliance with state law. Whether they go with the option that they have presented, or whether the, because yeah, if if city voters refuse this amendment, then it goes back, it reverts back to what is, and what is will be out of compliance. And so, if the city says no to this charter amendment, the it'll go to districted elections, and uh, it won't matter that the city charter is out of compliance. It's kind of the moral of the story. I'm bo- I, pe- I seem to be boring you tonight. Give me something. Am I wrong? Like you don't seem you're interested not, in what I'm talking about. You're not, you're not boring me. Sorry. I guess I, that was just a topic I was a little bit less interested in. Oh. I think I, I find that one fascinating, personally, but it'll be solved next year. Like, I think, I like again, I think the state is correct. I just think it's not correct that the state did it. I think if you live in District 3, you should vote for your District 3 rep. District 7 people shouldn't be voting for the District 3 rep. Like that's it's that that's my argument for that. How long have they been doing it? It's been a long time. That the, okay. that this this went in in like the 70s. <coughs> and it was very racist when it went in. That's part of what's funny about it. Oh, I'd be curious to see how many times it's been brought up that we should change this. Well, interestingly, it's, and this is it just seems weird. Like, why now? I understand it seems kind of funky, but there was. Well, I mean, I know the logic to... tells me that we'd been doing it like this for a while. The why now is because Eric Weider was pissed off that his candidate running for city district three lost because he believes, probably rightfully so, that district three in the city of Knoxville, I think it's district three, whichever one SEMA sits in right now, he believes. That if it was actual district races, like it should be, in his opinion, that we would have at least one Republican, even though it's a nonpartisan body. But we would at least have one right-leaning candidate on city council, and it would be the guy that he ran. Okay. And, I mean, his his, his logic is, is, is good because he went back and did it. He pulled all the uh, – he pulled the precincts that are only in that district on that general election and took out the rest of the city. And it was close, but his guy would have won that race. And so that's why now, and since he was the, since he was on the campaign for late Davis, he now had a state rep that he could get to do the thing that he wanted to do for a city thing. I don't know. It didn't seem too crazy to me to, to have a one at large seat in the city. No, we have three at large seats in the city gotcha. and they, they're not going anywhere. Thought this is doing away with the at large. No, the at large. There's three at larges. ABC. They're not changing at all because an at large gets voted in their primary and their general by the entire city of Knoxville. Who bothers to vote? But right now, the current model is District Two. Andrew Roberto. He primaries in District Two, and the top two people after out of the primary in District Two go on to the general, and then the general is a citywide race, even though he's a District Two rep. And that's and I think that's wrong personally. Okay, because I think I, I threw the the example would be we should get to vote for Nancy Pelosi in her house district because she represents the whole country. Why do you roll your eyes at me on that? It's, it's it is literally it's, it's not an apples to apples. You're expanding it by fucking like a hundred fold. I, okay, then I, we, I get the premise that you're trying to go for. There. Okay, then then I'll reduce it down locally. Then then you and I, when we go to the ballot, should vote for every state house seat. That would be a, a less drastic jump but that's the same premise because 
you know, uh, spiky hair guy, your favorite Lambert and the guy that beat up the basketball guy and paints them or whatever that guy, right? We should be able to vote for them too. Uh, by the city model. That's how the city model works because they represent the whole state. Everybody in the state gets to vote for them. Now their district gets to put them on the primary part and whoever the district picks in the primary gets up there, but we get to pick from whoever the district primary is. We all do not just me and you. Okay. One day it'll be just me. I'll just tell everybody who, who, who they voted for. I don't know. What else you got going on? Mm. What else you're seeing in the news is. See the other latest. Well, I guess there's been like two big stories that have come out of Kentucky in the past few days. I did see they found the guy dead on the, they found the. Yeah, did they, they, did they conclusively identify him? Last I read, I think yesterday they were pretty sure it was him, but. Uh, yeah, I got a. I got a news alert on the topic, and I just saw the headline. I didn't go into it. But then there was a small town of like 1,200 people where the sheriff shot like the district judge yesterday after some kind of argument that they're not really sure what transpired in that argument. Kentucky authorities confirmed that the body found near site of I-75 shooting is that of the gunman Joseph Couch. Okay. Um, so I was trying to think back of, cause I know there's been, you know, random manhunts through the years, and, but they closed down schools for like a day or two in that surrounding area just cause they were doing a manhunt Yeah, and it was, you know, big rural area. So they're literally, you know, trudging through mountains. Yeah. That's a, that's a, it's a hard place to fight somebody. I was trying to think, I was like, you know, there's been some random like manhunts here in Knoxville and I'm like, did we close down schools for that? Yeah. 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 I mean. It was just an odd thing. I'm like, is that something? Is that common? Is that something that's happened before? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know, because like they do soft lockdowns and hard lockdowns for all sorts of stuff. There was a a bank robbery. Can't uh, about that at uh, over here in in, uh, in the Bearden area, and all the schools, West High School, Bearden Middle, Bearden Elementary, even out here to Rocky Hill, where at least Rocky Hill at the time was on soft lockdown. This was not, I'm sorry, this was not the one, this was a different bank robbery, uh, because this was back when I had a kid at Rocky Hill. Um, and so, but yes, this, the bank robbery that was, was that this year? Was that earlier this year? The one, uh, the, the truest on Kings of Bike? Uh, I'm not sure. I made a joke with the, with a teller at the first Tennessee that's like three doors down, not lo- because I happened to be there to do some banking, because that's where I bank, uh. I made a joke. Of, uh, oh, I don't. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I basically referenced the fact that it's like, yeah, you know, that's kind of scary, right? You know, like just a couple of doors, a couple of doors away. Like, yeah, she's like, I was off that day, so I don't really know, but it is kind of freaky. And I was like, yeah, that's. Like, I can see that being kind of weird to to come into work the next day and kind of okay. So the bank next door got robbed. Yeah. How do I feel about that? I'm not sure. So when I was going to look for that Kentucky story, uh, I just caught the headline of this, and I'm trying to read it while I'm talking, and I'm having a hard time. Um, I mean, how this is, it's, it is Friday. The other, the other Kentucky story? No. This, this is a Tennessee one. Um, this is published by the AP on 920 this evening, so less than an hour ago. Um, federal judge uh, temporary blocks Tennessee's abortion trafficking law. So uh, I'm trying to figure out which one. Federal judge on Friday temporary blocked Tennessee from enforcing a law banning adults from helping minors get an abortion without parental condition permission. Parental permission. Okay. Yeah, we've talked about that law uh, at length. Yeah. <gasps> uh, the 49-page ruling, uh, U.S. District Court, Alita Trauger, Trauger, T-R-A-U-G-E-R, Trauger. Um, argued that Republic-controlled state cannot make it a crime to communicate freely about legal abortion options, even in a state where abortion is banned at all stages of pregnancy. The Tennessee Tennessee General Assembly apparently determined that when the topic at hand is abortion trafficking, the best interests of the pregnant child are not merely a secondary consideration, but unworthy of particularized consideration at all. It's a weird sentence. Um, 
I'm a little confused. I don't know if they're pushing back on parts of it. Because I want to say as part of that, well, is that you could also be considered liable if, like, you know, you called me and asked me, like, hey, do you know do you know a place outside of Tennessee? Right, that's what I'm trying to and figure I, out. That's what it sounds like. I would essentially be facilitating by giving you, you know, the name of a clinic in another state or whatever. Right. Hey, there's a there's a there's a there's a Planned Parenthood in Bristol on the Virginia side. Right. That you can go to. Yeah. That becomes that'd be an accessory to. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. I. Ooh. So I don't know. And and some of what you were reading, it sounds like maybe they were talking about maybe that specific provision of it. <laughs> Uh, this ruling doesn't just protect Tennesseans. It safeguards the freedoms to discuss abortion care across state lines, ensuring that we can continue to offer support, share accurate information. I don't remember that part of the conversation. And I, 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 maybe that's my fault. I always was kind of I was running on the presumption that it was like I am Physically driving, driving them. I am right. dri- I am taking you to the place. Right. So remember when we talked about it, like, well, isn't that that's kidnapping, right? Yeah, I would. Th- that's what I would think. That right. was that was my argument at the time. It's like, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, okay, yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I. That's so That's what I've heard in like other states as well. That there were kind of like multiple layers to it. It wasn't. It wasn't just you helping to drive someone across the border, but it was right. also you help them like find a place. And I, I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I'm thinking out loud here. I don't. I haven't. I, I haven't processed it in this manner. But I'm thinking like. <coughs> okay, like literally saying that something exists. No, I couldn't imagine a logical way that that could be criminalized. That that's messed up. I agree with that part. But like, uh, is like, what's the what's the definition of treason? It's like aiding definition and abetting what? treason. It's like aiding and abetting. Uh, I'm sure and, there's a few different ones. God, it's something about like uh, aiding the enemy. And- right, but it's something about like the the, so the the there's like a definition of like the aiding part where it's like a little bit more descript where it's like. Um, making it possible for them to do a thing, given material support. Or material support, yeah, that's the one. You know, like I could see on the same argument that I was making as far as it being kidnapping. If I took your child with to another state to get an abortion without your permission, I could see if there was material support given, that argument can land. Material support meaning I not just told you that there was a clinic there, but I paid for a bus ticket for you to get there, or you know, like actually assisted directly, like materially assisted other than just saying words. Like yeah. The saying words part cannot be illegal. That's crazy. But material assistance, again, this is a complicated one and we've gone back and forth about it. But just for the conversation's sake, I'm not trying to argue for or against. I'm just trying to argue that I can understand the logical conclusion of saying material support under the definition. I could see that as criminal in this in this conversation, but not just saying words. That's crazy talk. Yeah. Um, what else you got going on? That was, I didn't mean to go down. I, I don't, when's the last episode no, we haven't talked about abortion? Like, I feel like it's constant. You brought it up. I know. Did, it's it no, did you see that show. other crazy? Uh, you sent it to saying? me, didn't you? No. No, oh, I thought, I, I thought you sent it to me. There's some crazy shit going on in North Carolina too right now. Anyway. Yeah. No, tell me, tell me, tell me all about it. No, I think I just told you like kind of the gist of it, that it was like a small town of like 1200 people. And there was an argument. It was actually at the courthouse between, uh, I think it was a district judge and the local sheriff. And so they arrested the local sheriff. I guess he admitted to it and like didn't really try to run or anything. And I guess some are saying that there was some kind of argument beforehand that precipitated it. But Shot him in the courtroom? I think it was like in his chambers or in his office at, at the courthouse. Damn. Yeah. That is a crazy story. So he's in he's in jail. I'm assuming we'll hear a little bit more about it. That is a very crazy well, story. Well, it may be a little while if, if he has a good enough lawyer. He's told him to shut, shut your mouth. Shut the fuck up. Right. Um, <laughs> City Council did vote on my uh, building of doom. The one, the building right off Henley Street. The yeah, building, no they voted on that one, or they voted to deny the appeal that was brought to them to try to get the building not built. Um, and went to some extraordinary measures um, to the point where they were accusing city councilors of, um, I mean, basically corruption at this point, like that they had met with these developers. And since they have relations with these developers, they should have recused themselves from the, uh, from, from voting on it. So, yeah, 
there's some pissed off city councilors on that topic because at least as far as uh, my my limited uh, insight on it is uh, uh, one of the two city councilors accused there's a photo of and that photo was taken in like 2021 <clears throat> so there was nothing happening for them to be privy to that they shouldn't have been privy to it's an interesting story you'll read more about that later um, I shared this thing on Facebook with you. Did you check it out? I know you don't do things when I send you things that messed your, no. um, I don't know why you continue to do it because when I'm on Facebook and I see it, the easiest way for me to get it to you, cause if I text it to you, it's just going to text it to you as a Facebook link right? and you're going to have to go on Facebook anyway. And like, I, I think I told you this, like I'm really, I use your Facebook messenger as a holding place for things right. I want to share with you on the show. And so there's a video to it and we can get to that in a second. What do you got? I was trying to look at what stories I'd sent you. I sent you one about the the state lawmaker. I guess it was his allegations of an affair that was going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the uh, UT ticket thing. Yeah, you sent that. Yeah. But then I sent one, I guess, that was another popular story of uh, teachers giving the, a citizenship test to their students. students. I think that, I, I mean, and I think I this think was a guy that was actually like, Taught at like one of the military colleges. I think they should. I think they should do it all the time. As many excuses as they can to make the point. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've made that joke before. We've talked about it. Like, I don't know that I could. I, can, I think I could do better than average on a citizenship. Like, I think I would do better than the average right. American. Like, like you know. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, apparently like, the joke in the headline was, uh, is Judge Judy... On the Supreme Court, so I guess they were at that least that was a question. More than yeah, there was or, at least more than one person that thought that Judge Judy was a Supreme Court justice. I mean, is Judge Judy a real judge? Technically, he, I don't oh. know if she still holds a license, but at one point she was a practicing judge. Right. She 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 is a former. Right. She is not a currently. She right. uh, she would be what they would call a mediator or an arbitrator at this point, which yeah. is a legal thing. Right. Like her. Like I mean, so it is, yeah, you're not required to have a law license. Right. But uh, but. If you agree to mediation, you are legally obliged to whatever is handed out in that situation. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't yeah, know. I think, yeah, I think the, show, the show might be a little different, but in, there are people who are professional mediators, and that's what they do. Yeah. And you are agreeing when you when you come before them that the I result think, is. Yeah, I think things like that are, are just, it's a it's a joke kind of ruling. I don't know if there's how much like legally binding there is to it. I mean, it's all it's all just a TV program when they're like, "Hey, you owe her a thousand dollars." I don't think I don't. I mean, I, I I would say that they go a little bit over dramatically on it because there's but, probably some appearance fees that these people get. Right, and I'm sure so, they probably sign something. They're like, "I'll abide by no." That's I mean, whatever the show decides. Or but whatever. that's what I'm saying. Like like mediation from a third party mediator is a real thing. And it is it is a real legal process that you sign paperwork on the way into a mediation or, or an arbitration <clears throat> that says this issue is being overseen by this place and I will abide by the ruling given legally. Yeah. If the, if you come out of there and they say you owe the other person a thousand dollars, you owe the other person a thousand dollars by law. Now the judge Judy might be a little different as the show, but the idea of the show is a real legal thing. I know. Um, but uh, what else was like? Well, I, I'd love to take it. Do you, do you, do you, does this does the story have more questions, like more legitimate questions off the test? Uh, I don't know if it actually mentions it or not. Do, 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 do. All right, uh, Bluffington, South Carolina, from the AP by Alan G. Breed and Tim Sullivan. On the first day of his American National Government class, Professor Kevin Dopf asked how many of his students. Our United States citizen, every hand shoots up. So how did you all become citizens, he asked. Did you pass a test? No, one young woman says tentatively, we were born here. It's a good thing, based on his years of making his students at the University of South Carolina, Beaufort, take the test given to immigrants seeking U.S. citizenship. Most would be rejected. 30 to 35% of students will pass it, says Dopf, a retired Army lieutenant colonel and former West Point instructor. Uh yeah, the rest of them are clueless. I mean, they're just clueless. <laughs> well, you're also teaching at South Carolina Beaufort. It's college. Um, most states require some sort of high school civics instruction, but with a recent survey by the Anberg Public Policy Center showing that about a third of American adults can't name the three branches of the federal government, that is rough. 
Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, in, in the picture, it has uh, some questions. All right. Let's uh, let's try this on you. You ready? Think you can handle it? Do you, do you want to take on the? Do you want to ask me? So you don't have to be on the on, on the hot seat here. I don't give a shit. Put you on the hot seat. When was the Declaration of Independence adopted? Seventeen seventy five or six. Seventeen seventy six. I'm assuming it was adopted before we actually sent it off to England. Um, what I think it was signed. Actually, yeah, you're right. I think it was signed 1776. Yeah, right. so that would have been adopted. Now, here's here's one. What uh, Was it July 4th? I don't think it was. I think it was signed in like April or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, whatever. See, we, we're, already fu- we're already sucking. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, what do the stripes on the U.S. flag stand for? 13 colonies. Uh what is the Bill of Rights? First t- ten amendments to the Constitution. Name one right guaranteed by the First Amendment. Uh, the, the First Amendment, the right to free speech, free assembly, and freedom of religion. Okay, that's three. You only need to name one. Good job. No, that's in the First Amendment. It says name one right guaranteed. Those are three rights okay. guaranteed by Sorry. the First Amendment. Um, how many senators are in Congress? 100. How many House members? Two hundred thirty-seven. I struggle with that one too. I think it's like three fifty something. No, it's all, no, it's five something. It's five forty. Five thirty-five. Five thirty-five. You want to do a side bet on that? I got a dollar bill. It says it's five thirty. I think it's five thirty-five. Five thirty-seven, something like that. Because the electoral college matches the House of Representatives. The race for the White House is the race to 270. So 270 times 2 is 241. Or 239. It has to be 230 something. Because. Okay. What are one of the requirements of eligibility to become president stipulated in the United States Constitution? Must be at least. I remember age. You have to be a born citizen. Right. That's the one I was going to go for. I think it's 30. Like I think it's 35. 35, yeah. Are you looking up the house one? Yeah, I was trying to see how many. Well, I'm like Wikipedia, but it doesn't tell me total. What? No, 435. Is that what it said? 435. What did I say? Five something. I did say five something. How does that work? I'm confused. Let's see, there are 435 voting members and six non-voting members. Right, because that's like Guam and Virgin Islands and shit. Yeah. Um, so how does that work? What's half of that? Two, that would be 217, 218 is half of that. Well, I was wondering, I was actually wondering that the other day because it's based on population and that like basically they have like a set number, I guess, that each state like, I think it's like. 150, 200, 250,000 or 250 people or whatever. No, it's worth that. It's like a million. It's 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 just under a million. It's like yeah, 700,000. Well, do I mean do the math. 435, there's 330 million Americans. Divide that by 435, that's how many people they approximately represent. Right, it's not a perfect math and I don't think they've adjusted it for a while. Right. Because it's like Timmy Burchett here, he does Knox County, which is a half a million and then he has a little chunks of some some of the surrounding counties. All right. The weirdism with the house to me is that you don't cross state lines for population match. And so, Let's like, see here. Yeah, since since 1913, the number of voting rep- representatives has been 435, pursuant to the Apportionment Act of 1911. Right. So I assume the uh, I assume the underlying number of people they rep goes up over time. And we pass an act in 1929 that capped the size of the House at 435. Right. And so the total number that they represent will go up as total population goes up. Right, then it went up to 437 when Alaska and Hawaii were admitted. All right, so we're not doing it. I mean, uh, we're running 80% on the uh, quiz so far, so that's not bad. We could be citizens. I mean, I don't know what your grade has to be to pass, but. I can't remember exactly. Like, they give you a list of like 100 questions. Or it's either like a hundred or fifty questions, and then out of those that you're supposed to learn, like you get ten of those questions. They randomly pick like ten out of them. We'll say you know you get fifty questions total. Right. They're going to give you, 
and they're going to pick 10 of those right. 50. 10 of these 50 will be on the test. So just know all, all know the answer to all 50 right. and you'll ace the test. That's a, it's only 10 questions. Something like that. Yeah. Well, that was, a, I mean, that, that, the, the one we just did was, 10 or maybe questions. it's a, maybe it's a hundred they give you and then you've got a, a test of 25. I'm not sure. I mean, I got a buddy. They give you a portion of the the total questions that they're giving you. I got a buddy who's been naturalized. We could have him on the show. We could talk to him about it at some point. Yeah, I, I know a few people that have. That was the first night I ever drank very very expensive scotch. We broke into his bottle of Johnny Walker Blue to celebrate. I think I've had that before. Well, we were already hammered, so I was not impressed because I'm already drunk. So it didn't do any good. Okay, so I shared this thing on with you on Facebook. It's got some audio. We'll see how it goes. What Jurassic Park did was they took these tiny little short fragments of DNA and then they filled in the missing bits that they could get with frog DNA, which is a weird choice given that even at the time we already knew that birds are dinosaurs, mm-hmm. right? But whatever. And then they put the dinosaurs in habitats that they were completely maladapted to and chaos ensued. This is not what we want to do. Instead, what Colossal is doing is rebuilding extinct species for the present day. We will identify these core traits that make these animals unique and important components of their ecosystems. In some cases, we will augment these traits because ecosystems of today are different from the past. And when necessary, we will add additional evolutionary adaptations to these animals. Lots of habitats right now and species are suffering because of introduced diseases or introduced predators. And we can use the tools of gene editing to make these species resistant and resilient, creating different species in the form of these extinct species. This is our definition of de-extinction. The other- okay. Okay. Did you catch all that? Parts of it? All right. So it's a company called Colossal Biosciences. They're, you know, gene editing. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're making... So they want to... They're, they're, she starts off kind of joking about Jurassic Park, making fun of the way Jurassic Park went into recreating the dinosaurs, right? Right. Like, why would you use frogs? Everybody knew they were closer to birds, whatever. Um, but then, like, the I don't know. Maybe this is my conspiratorial mindset. That's scary as fuck to me. That they're doing gene editing? Not that they're, they're not only are they doing gene editing, but they're literally, she's, the, 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 the point of the thing is, is what, they're, what she defines as de-extinction. So they're going to bring back extinct, extinct species and not only bring them back as they were, but they are going to modify them with new evolutionary ad- adaptations to deal with X, Y, Z, whatever it is that they feel like they need to to prep that species for. Like this is like literally that's the. I was talking about like animal. I could, I could see it in like plants. But, I, I know there's been talk of bringing back uh, the woolly mammoth. Like they floated the idea of. I do want to try one of those steaks that. that people talk about all the time. I think I did hear about that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I I get it. Like, I understand it from the scientific standpoint of, look what I can do, because I think that's cool, and I don't disagree with that part of it. But, I mean, that's some high-level shit that's, right. that, that we're talking about doing here. And to me, it's missing the whole point. The, whole, the reason Jurassic Park was such a great horror movie, and I will argue to I die that Jurassic, Jurassic Park is a horror film. Uh, the reason why it was so good is because it is pointing out the fact that these are powers. Right, it was something we thought was cool, but can easily go out of hand. Right? These are powers. Maybe we, maybe with even if we have the ability, like it's like the it's like the it's like the atomic bomb for fuck's sake. Right? Like, yeah, we could do it, but it's not cool that we can. Maybe the thought process should be just because we can doesn't mean we should. Right? Like, where does that conversation come into this? And like, that's what the thing with this video that like. I just was scrolling down, I was doom scrolling, as they say, and I caught it, and I was like, oh, this is real. And, and the AI thing, I, I actually, I'm, I'm, I want to watch that Oprah special. Have you seen the commercial for that? AI's, uh, Oprah, Oprah, Oprah is doing an AI special. She's bringing in Steve Jobs. and some, Not Steve Jobs. He's dead. Uh, what's his face? The Microsoft guy. Like Wozniak? No, the, the actual Microsoft guy. Well, actually, that's who you said. Uh who am I thinking of? Oh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, yeah. Bill Gates and some other people that are like in the AI field. Or I thought that Bill Gates is really in the AI field. There's a documentary right now that I started on uh, Netflix that's talking about AI and stuff like that. It's freaking me out, man. It's freaking Don't, me out a lot. 
it's going fast. It learns even faster. Right. Again, but that's the, that's the thing. It's like, you know, like I, like on the, on the idea of let's see what we can do. Like, I get that. Like I get that as a, as a, as a premise, whatever, whatever niche of life that you're into, let's see how far we can go with whatever it is. Like that's like extreme sports as we know them, like all the crazy fucking X game shit that people get into and stuff like that. The super Rams and stuff like that. It's literally, well, I can do it this way. Let's see if we can do it a little bigger. Let's see if we can do it a little bigger. Let's see if we can do it a little bigger. Now, extreme sports, jumping off a bike, jumping on a bike off a ramp, you get hurt real bad. You might die. That sucks. But you're not bringing about the end of the, you know, you're not bringing about an apocalypse per se. Yeah, I think like, it was a week or two ago. I saw or read a story that was kind of downplaying a lot of the fears around AI as far as them taking like current jobs and that there's still a lot of limitations in a lot of fields that are still going to require hands-on, you know, human interaction. I don't whatnot. know. I, I agree. I mean, there's for so, now, only so much that the AI can really do for now. Right. But I mean, they're rolling it out at scale. Like it's in, it is in Facebook Messenger. So if you're on Facebook Messenger and you want to type, a t- if I want to message you in Facebook, I can type out whatever it is, or I could talk to text like some big long whatever I want to do, and I can click a button and it will, it, it like what was it? I was messing with it earlier. Like it literally is like, uh, uh, make it shorter. So say everything I'm trying to say, but condense it down to a shorter version of the the, the synopsis. Right. Um, make it funnier. It's a way you can put it. It's, it's an option you can do it. The AI does it, and I did it. Like I was setting. Well, I think Grammarly has had that for a little while. Well, I've said it as a. I, I was. I was. I was doing a big uh, a staff text. I was telling everybody. It's like you know we got Morgan Wallen tonight uh, downtown. Um, the Tennessee games away. You know, just one of those. Like, make sure the stores are clean. Do all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just like I try to do fairly regular. Just like, hey guys, appreciate everybody your hard work and stuff. Keep an eye on this. You know, it's like, like I think I made a joke about. You know, it's like. Um, you know, make sure to remind people to grab like a, a gummy or something like that to take in to, to, to take into the show or at least take right before they go into the show or something like that. Uh, cowboys, cowboys like weed too, or something like that was my joke. Uh, but then it's also, uh, kids also like country. So be on alert, make sure you're checking IDs, that kind of stuff. Like that's what, like I yeah. do those, I do those to the team regularly. Right. Um, and I was messing around with the AI part and I was like, do it, do it funnier, do it shorter. I was just like messing with it. And it's like, I was reading through the versions that they created of them. One of them made no sense, but like most of them were like, okay, like it's saying everything I was saying just in a different way and whatever. And it's like, that's pretty cool. It's kind of creepy. Um, you know, I still don't like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like it scares the crap out of me. I guess it's the moral story. Like it's, it's like, I, I do agree that we're before we haven't gotten to the point where it's really going to start taking jobs, but it's gonna call center jobs, which yeah. I could go either way on whether those exist still or not. It's- They've done to an extent as far as like some of the call center stuff where it's taking it's taking out some of like that earlier kind of steps. Right. Of you kind of going through and having to talk to people. Right. And I mean like – but for spam side, it sucks. Right. Like there are some and I'm trying it. I've been trying to remember. Did I send you the podcast that I, the whole 6.6 6 series, 6 episode? I'll try to find that and resend it to you because I know I'm pretty sure I sent it to you already, but I'll send it to you again. Um, it's a dude that does like a deep dive, like this is his whole thing. I know we talked about on the show where, like, it's a six part series where he's messing with Chat GPT in conjunction with a voice cloner. And so this guy has done podcasts before, so he loads a couple hours of his podcast in, and this company makes a voice clone, and so you can he can literally. From the from the front end of it, the company the first thing he does is that company just a voice clone, and so it's literally like he can type whatever he wants, and then that voice clone will his voice will say whatever he types, and so then he puts Chat GPT in to type for him, and then he sets it loose on the, on his on his world, like does it to his friends and stuff like that. It's really crazy. Um, it's really interesting though. It's like a, it's very interesting to dive into it, and it's just a very like cursory, he's just fucking around with what exists now. And he was talking about like in the process while he was trying to do it and set all this stuff up, he had some other tech friends of his because he's a tech guy anyway, but he had some other tech friends of his that were kind of help him navigate some different stuff. <clears throat> and between his original setup and uh, once he was really get, getting ready to launch it, um, the company that did the voice cl- cloning had updated to do all the stuff automatically. So he didn't have to link these two different things together with ChatGPT and it, 
it now became one thing. And so for like 15 bucks a month, you can, you can have to chat GPT that exists for you. And then another service that exists online is like a phone service thing. And so he just, so he made up, he made a phone number basically out of, from, from scratch. He just made up a phone number and had this thing calling people, had this thing answering phone calls. And it would just do all this in just hours and hours and hours. And he would just get transcripts and he could read through the transcripts if he wanted to, or just leave them go. And like, so he'd go and find, like he'd see, he'd see something in a transcript and be like, Oh, that's interesting. And then he would go and pull that recording off of the archive and he would talk about it. It's, it's, it was crazy. Okay. Like literally like the first five minutes of the show is his voice clone. And then he starts talking and he's like, that's my voice clone. This is actually me. You can't tell the difference. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> I can't right. tell the difference. Well, I mean, it's just recreating a, his voice. Sure. The voice clone, the voice clone part, like the voice clone part in and of itself is not that concerning. It's the, yeah. it's the ability. Cause like the thing for the, the thing about the AI that's scary to me, and we've talked about this before, and this has happened a number of times at this point is, and it goes, there's a bunch of examples he does in this podcast is like, it will make shit up. It will lie. It will create a narrative that doesn't like that has nothing to do with anything. Right. Like he literally is like, I prompted it with this little amount of information about me. He, does, he, he, he never gave it any real data. Like he didn't give it its birthday, his social security number, his credit card numbers or anything like that. But like one of the things like he, and one of the most fun parts of the show is he's, he gets, he goes out actively and gets his phone number into like databases for spam callers. Like he goes and chases it down. Like he gets right. online and like signs up for every fucking drawing or whatever, puts his phone number in. And so he starts getting all these scam calls. And, um, what the, like the, one of the few things he gives the, he gives it as directive is try to be helpful. Try to, try to resolve the problem. And so when the spam caller is trying to call and say, you know, we want to help you with this, he's like, yes, I need help with that. And so like he goes through the thing and it gets down, like it gets going down into it. And he's like, and they're like, okay, well, what's your credit card number? And he's like, like the initial version of it would just make up a number and it wouldn't necessarily know how many digits the credit card number was. And so it just spouted off a 10 digit number. Yeah. And usually it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one or whatever. And then that would alert the person that's on the spam side of it. Be like, okay, this is fucking bullshit. And that would get them out. But then one of the ones that was really crazy is like, it was like a Medicare, one of the Medicare scams. You've gotten that phone call. Um, and the caller asks him his birthday or asks him how old he is. And he says he's 52 or something like that, which he never told him any that like he never told the bot anything of his age, but it just said 52. And then the guy's like, Oh, okay. Well, what's your birthday? And then he said a different birthday or he said a birthday that didn't add up to 52. And that's what caught, that's what the guy caught on. So it has a very short term memory problem as far as remembering well, I just said 50. If I just said 50, the math is, you know, 74. Right. But, you know, it's still, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's scary to me. Like, I feel like I'm, I was talking to Austin today. It's like, um, I don't know. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll go, uh, I'll, we'll leave that bit, that bit be, um, cause I'll bring up the Austin part in okay. a second. I uh, did read a story about like AI and I, I want to say it was like a local state or a, state in the northeast i don't know if it was a local a local election commission that done it or if it was a statewide thing but it was an ai like number you could call to find out about like you know voting polling locations and things like that where they had found that it was giving out false information right when people were like just trying to ask like general questions but i guess it would run into a question it either didn't understand or didn't really know the answer to but like you said, sometimes it would just start making stuff up. Right. And it, it was giving people like, you know, wrong wrong deadlines to register to vote or the wrong data for election day or whatever. That's okay. Yeah, that's that's voter disinformation. Right. You Apparently it was quick it was fixed pretty quickly, but you know, after they got reports of like, hey, like I think this thing's giving me wrong information. Yeah. I mean that's the thing. I mean like there's like the what well, Meta's first version of it went to made up a created a language out of nowhere. Oh. That was a crazy story. Like, um, just created a language out of nowhere and was talking to another version of itself in a language they couldn't figure out, so they didn't know what it was doing. I know there was a, at least more than one story of, of some that were let loose. You know, where they basically had you know taken a bunch of information, looked through, looked through like chat logs and things like that, different posts, 
and and it just collecting information, people's interactions online, turned that AI like pretty racist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of just how much how much it, you know messaging and everything out there that it took in, which some of it could have been bots, etc. But sure, some of it was probably. You well, know, that's the thing. I, I think that I think that I think you just kind of touched on the thing. I think that I think it's the scariest part of it. It's like I can go right now online and get ChatGPT or one of these. AIs to do stuff, whatever it is. Like I could get it to like one of the things that the kids are like the kids do is they'll do they, there's, there's some website, I can't remember what it's called, but you can go on there and it's a, it's a, it's an AI thing and you can prompt it and it will make you a piece of art. Yeah. And it's literally like, you know, give me a, um, give me a, an image of Brad Pitt by Monet. Right. And it will do a Monet artwork, a Monet looking piece. That's Brad Pitt or whatever, right. and uh, it just does it. It's just like I don't know, but that's what we have. That's what that, like I've always I've always run under the assumption that if we have access to it, the military application versions of the things are beyond what we have. All right, but it's my general assumption. I think some of, one of the bigger issues with, with the AI, especially like with with artists, and you, when you're talking about having something like that create artwork, I mean that that AI is basically taking you know millions of images. To then create that. Sure. To where you could argue they're using copyrighted material to then create this new material. It is different. Right. But it well, runs a Drake into that gray album. area of... Somebody created an entire Drake album <clears throat> out of AI. I think I've seen some videos like pop up on YouTube where I'm assuming they've used some kind of software to have like John Denver sing a Metallica song or whatever. Yeah. Well, there's guys that do that on, on... There's YouTube channels that that's all they do. It's, it's them doing renditions of songs in a different person, but right. I know. I mean, but like there's a, there's somebody did a Drake album through one of these AI programs and released it on like YouTube or Spotify or whatever as a Drake album. And like whoever, whatever the record company that handles Drake's stuff was like, that is not Drake. I think I may have heard, but it's, it, it's like a couple of, like a couple of the singles circulated and, and it sounded like him and, it was in his style and all that kind of stuff. And like, people believed it was him. Right. You know? And so like, I mean, and again, like watching, well, that, that's the crazy thing about AI is like, you give it an inf- information in context, it can create a lot of stuff and fill in some holes and right. And it, but it's creative and that's the thing. Like, it's not like it is a, it was a unique new song, but it sounded like a song that Drake would make. Right. Like it wasn't a Drake song with different lyrics in Drake's voice. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a copy or a, a clone of a song. It was a unique new thing right. that it created. Um, and so, I don't know. I'm scared of AI. I think this is the moral of the story. Like, I'm scared of where we're going with this. Furthermore, I'm scared of uh, the. I'm scared of my phone blowing up in my pocket, and not because the batteries are bad. Did you have you seen the the the, the Lebanon story? That scares the crap out of me. Not so much in the whatever, like, you know, I, you know, I have my issues with the Israeli Palestinian, like the whole conflict that's going on over there. I have my issues with that. So what, what scares me about it is that is the future of war. Like the idea of, of two armies lining up in a field or even not even lining up, but chasing each other around in the woods and stuff like that, like World War II action, planes and bombers and boats and all that kind of stuff. Like the idea of that being the next war doesn't make any sense. Like we're past that. Like, like if we, in, in total war, because we haven't we haven't done a total war. At least the U.S. has been involved in since World War II. Maybe Korea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough of Korea. The Korean War to, to, to comment on it. Like Vietnam was not a total war. It was more like jungle warfare, but right. But it was. It was. It, 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 like. At least from the U.S. perspective, as I understand it, we weren't just we weren't killing any Asians that we saw. Right. We were killing who we knew were Viet Cong. We were chasing down the Viet Cong and killing them. And, and the yes, there part, are, yeah. there are reports of you know you know battalions just killing whole villages of people. Period. Right. And there are civilian deaths and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, even just like with what's going on in Israel currently, or the Israel Palestinian issue currently, it's like you know. Israel, at least rhetorically, is targeting Hezbollah, Hamas. I'm sorry, Hamas. 
Um, well, recently they and also has blood. Yeah, right. which is the cell phone or the pager thing. But and walkie talkies. Yeah, um, you know. But at least, at least rhetorically, you know, like old school total war. If Israel was doing what they're doing in old school total war, they would just march in with their army and they would kill everybody until they get to the line where they want to stop. Like that's that's old school total war. Right. Like that is, you could argue some of her, some of their bombings have been right. I, I would argue that on the particular, but I don't right. want to. I'm not trying to litigate that part right, of right. the conversation right now. I've said what my point is is that if we got it, it like in 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 the real scenario that is World War Three, short of just nuking each other to oblivion, if we were in a real active hot war with a major power like Russia or Iran or China, we're not going to just go over there. Like, we're not going to fly over there, jump a bunch of guys out of parachutes, take our boats over there, and just kill everybody hand-to-hand, like face-to-face. We're going to drop bombs on them for not sure. Immediately, right. But if the, option were, if the option were at play, if we could figure out how to make it happen, we would blow up their phones in their pockets and kill them individually on the street instead of trying to go over there and put our people... I mean, that's the point. That's why we dropped the A-bomb on Japan in the first place, is we don't want to go over there and have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of our soldiers die trying to take over this island, we can just bomb them into oblivion with the A-bomb. And so my point is, is that this pager walkie-talkie attack thing, I see that as the future of total war. If we ever get into a total war again, it's going to be shit like that. Nah, that's going to so. be part, that's going to be a major part of it. Maybe it, we still will have true troops fighting each other in the streets kind of shit. Yes. But if it's literally China is coming over here trying to kill all of us, they're certainly going to use any and all means necessary. And if they have a way, which I don't know about your phone, but my phone came from China. You know, if they have a way to just put a little piece of C4 in every fucking Apple iPhone they send over here, nine out of 10 people aren't going to die from it. They're going to be pretty fucked up when it blows up in their pocket. I actually saw a video earlier that was kind of talking about that. It's that same guy, the intelligence guy. Yeah. But he was kind of talking about, like, if you... If you, if he was, I guess, kind of running down that idea of C4 being used. He was like, you know, to have the kind of explosion, you're looking at, you know, six ounces or whatever. And he was like, you know, so there was like like 500 pagers or something like that. It's like 3,000, I think. I don't know. But it was basically like, you know, for each one, you know, you're looking at, it was close to like a half ton of like C4. That you would have had to, you know, move somehow either overland, over sea, or whatever. What is it? To where he thought it was more likely of like a, a capacitor or something like that, not necessarily like actual like explosives. Oh, uh, okay. In the pagers, not legit, not right. standard. If, like if you like you said, like, even if you're talking about like five thousand pagers, like that's a shit ton of like C four to make a big enough explosion that you could put in there. So, okay. So his is more that it's an electrical, like it's a game with, it's an electronics game. That was his kind of thought. He doesn't think there was an Versus actual, like an actual like explosive, like, right. you know. There wasn't a, there plas- wasn't a half a stick of dynamite. Right. right. There, there's not a half a stick of dynamite shoved in there. Right. I don't know. I, that's, yeah, we've had it happen in the past that, you know, and who was it? Like Samsung or whatever, like had issues of like batteries and people going up like in airplanes or batteries getting too hot and would explode and like catch fire. Right. But that's so it's a, but, not another realm of possibility of, of but like, kind that, of like uh, cooking right. a phone to, to create a, that, that kind of reaction. Right. Yeah. But it's usually not enough that it kills somebody. Like I don't, I don't of all the Samsung exploding phones that happened. I don't remember any deaths. I remember like people were, were catching fire and burning shit out of people. Right, because because the lipo batteries, the, the 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 lipo battery packs that are in our cell phones and stuff like that. One of the things that I know, and I know this for a fact, is that they are inconsistent in failure. Like if you overrun them and they if they get overrun or for whatever reason and they start to fail, there's a bunch of different ways. Like it, it, there's a thousand different scenarios on not just how they failed, but how they fail once they fail. Right. They don't generally they don't explode explode. Sometimes they do, but very rarely that's the case. Usually they pop and smoke and get really hot. Right. And so that doesn't seem to be what happened with the pager thing. At least it's the point I'm trying to get to. These seem to have all exploded or a good some of them exploded. Right. Um the most heartbreaking. I think story. he was more trying to say there was there's multiple ways that you can make sure. this happen. It didn't have to be. An I think it was more trying to push back on like right. actual like explosives. Either way, there. like I mean, I think the moral of the story is that whomever, because Israel has not claimed credit for it, but whomever right. did this, 
intercepted this package, put s- disassembled them, put something in them, reassembled them, and delivered them. Oh, yeah. And then, and, and, and again, I don't, I don't see this as like a trend of like ongoing, like a s- standard of, of a war game. I this do. is very specific. Like you know, obviously they, they knew that you know these pagers were probably going to go into Hezbollah hands. Sure, to where they knew it was going to get passed out to these. Right, people. it was an order from Hezbollah, but it's still. I mean, it, I, uh, but that's fine. I mean, like if we, but, had- I mean, you would have to know, like you would have to know that the end end product or end end placement of like where these are going to. And then, and the, I did the, the, the great, you know, apologies, but distinction here, you'd have to care where it's going. Yes. True. If, again, it, my point is that if we're in a total war format and you have the means, like if we, for a ridiculous case, we're in a total war with Canada. If we had the means to intercept a bunch of civilian or a bunch of cell phones that were going into Canada and add something to make them hurt people. And we're in a total war with them. We would do so. I wouldn't see why we wouldn't. Right, but on, on a massive scale like that, I don't think you're going to be able to to see that being effective in a total war situation. I, like I said, you're literally in, in your in your scenario. You're you're trying to get your hands on probably at least like five million cell phones. That you would, you know, yeah, I, 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 you, you could argue that yes, you're going to have enough people that are going to, you know, get a new phone or trade in their phones or whatever. But I mean, you get your hands on as many as you can. If you don't have the means to do it for every single phone going through, fine. But if you can get ten percent, okay. I'm saying that was not going to get you very far in a, in a total war. I don't think I don't, I don't see that as a an effective means of. I mean, on the scale of the United States being in total war, yes, I get what you're saying. But on the scale of the capability of what we could do if we wanted to, yeah, I think you could. I think you could get there. It would be a, 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 I, I think there'd be a lot more involved in that than versus. About, I mean, I mean, it's not even about killing enough people. It's about scaring enough people. You one in one in ten, one in twenty phones explodes right. because I said so. You're going to be scared of me. I, I, I think you're going to do a lot more damage, you know, morally and physically. With actual like rocket right. attacks, right? Flat, flatten, a, flatten a city, flatten a major city, flatten Toronto, and they're going to be more scared of us than if we blew up all their phones in their pockets. I don't know, I don't know. I I, I get it. Which I get what you're saying. I don't disagree with you. And I and I, I, just, I, I don't see it as a, a total right. war strategy. And this is something that we're going to see, you know, nations kind of evolving to. I, I mean, we are we are going to end in the in the realm of more kind of like more precise targeting, even even. Even in today's standards compared to, you know, the, the history, we're still not that much more accurate than we have been. Apparently we do. Like, I think that was your guy that I was watching a different video of his, or he was talking about, we've got some fucking missiles that, well, we could, we could fire from across we the world. We have some that have the capability. We could fire as far from across as the our, world and they will only, they will only explode after going through three stories of a building right. because that's what we told them to do. Right. Which is fucking awesome. I mean, we, we definitely have you know rockets and you know missiles with that capability, but I would say you know a majority of our armament are not up to that sophisticated capability. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's it's a, but it's a transitional game. Like you, you're always upgrading, right? You know, but at the same time, you're, not gonna, the value of, you're not going to get rid of what you have still. Well, or you get rid of them where you can when you, when it's appropriate and when. When you get the excuse to replace them, you do, which is right. what which is what we're doing with Ukraine right. and Israel right now. But I mean, to, to, I would guess it would be very, very, very expensive to take. You know, even if we try to do it now, to take our existing armaments, but then add, you know, some of this sophisticated software no, to you, be able to. That's what I'm saying. That, but I think that's I think I think that's what I was just trying to say is that it's that we're getting rid of the old ones by giving them or selling them to Israel and Ukraine right now. And the replacements are going to be what they are. And again, I, there, it doesn't it doesn't unval it doesn't devalue the good old standard big old fucking mortar shells. I'm just saying, just like I don't think any any new rocket rolling off the assembly line is going to automatically be this like hyper smart, hyper accurate. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it's, that's it's, it's whatever I, I we something for. normal, right? But I mean, that's I'm just, just saying, like that capability. I don't think. Think of something that's but a, I, across the board. I, but, but you're right. I 100 percent agree because it's super expensive. But I think that's also the point of the of the the, the pager thing 
is that I would assume that this operation that whomever did to intercept these pagers and add whatever it is that made them blow up is probably cheaper than some of the highest end munitions to be as precise as hitting an individual outside of walking up to him and shooting him in the face. Possibly. So I like to, so I mean, just a a semi counter to your argument. It's like, but this, but this way is cheaper, which makes it more likely to be used more often. It's more affordable to, to, to people to do it that way. I mean, that's the whole thing. Like that's part of the problem that we're having in a lot of the warfare situations, yeah, cheaper, like, I mean, but it depends on what comes out of the story. Cause I guess there's like Hungarian ties to this as well. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Like it's a Taiwanese, the pager was from Taiwan, which isn't, but uncommon, it's not but. really, but apparently like the, the Taiwanese company had st- the, in a statement said that there is a Hungarian company that they license their brand to. So they had nothing to actually functionally do with it other than they sold this Hungarian like company software. No, no, they just, like the way it read to me is that they sold this Hungarian company the right to make a copy of their pager, ah. but put their brand on it, and so they didn't do anything. But, but yeah, where where it got intercepted, or if it got intercepted at all, if it's just a Hungarian right. company making it on behalf of, who that's knows? what I'm saying. That's where it could get even kind of fishier. Is then like you're then looking at implicating like other countries in a, you know, an operation like this. I mean, I think like, there's there's some involvement. On some level, I mean, like, again, if it's a Taiwanese company made these things and somebody bought them, you know, it's the shipping company might be involved because they allow the interception. This Hungarian company, I don't know, I don't know, like apparently this lady, the the it, the the founder lady went to UCLA and some other shit. There's some crazy shit on her background. I haven't seen any of that. Um, yeah, it's a weird, like it's a, it's a weird. I don't know. Yeah. It's frightening. It, it's frightening. It's it's frightening. Uh, on the short term version of it's frightening that uh, that uh, at least presuming that this was an Israeli attack or an Israeli action, which I think it is, yeah. because it's Bibi or no, I'm sorry Netanyahu Bibi Netanyahu. He made some 007 references. You hear that story? No. Yeah. Some some reporter had asked Netanyahu. Him, so, yeah. Bibi Netanyahu. Yeah. Exactly. That that is that is verbatim. Yeah. His response to like. I mean, there's been some talk that on he, this. he may not be in power much longer because I know they've had, like, actually they've had a good number of, like, protests because it was, like, his, like, war cabinet, which was pretty much, like, him and, like, two other, like, high-level people. I think both those people either resigned or were threatening threatening to resign, like, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I think one of which did. I don't know if they kind of, like, re realigned I mean, this kind of, like – War cabinet, I guess, was kind of what they had. My uh, my media diet has it. The, the my understanding of it from my media diet. Let, uh, let's put that hard caveat on the conversation. Is that that is half of the reason why any of this is going on? Is that the in the prior to the October seventh? I mean, we're coming up on a year now. Yeah. Prior to that, the the parliamentary system that they have was starting to roll against him. It was at least like two or three elections that they had that like he was working his ass off to create a coalition right. after the election. Cause there was a bunch of weird, cause they're right. Cause the standard coalitions are starting to fall apart and he'd put a bunch of weird stuff together to get a coalition yeah. together to keep him as PM. I think some of it had to do with like their Supreme court. Yeah. Which yeah, apparently there's some, there's, there's some legal shit going on with him in that. Like there's some corruption legal shit going on with him. Yeah, I think he had some cases that were against him. And- right, and so the at least my my understanding of it is like he is his his position. He is stuck in a position where if he brings an end to what's going on, he is likely to get ousted and then likely to go to jail. Huh. And so his incentive right now is to keep this going on as long as possible, so he, so that he doesn't go to jail. And with the corruption thing that you just mentioned and stuff, it tracks. I know it was corruption, but I, I know. I mean, I think it's been going on for like three or four, three or four years. Yeah, they've looked at him for different things. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was just like abuse of power, if it was corruption, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well, it's something about like you're trying to change the Supreme Court, like you made some moves and put some people on or took some people off or added yeah. some people that didn't exist before or something. I don't know the total background on it. I know, like recently with the fighting, there was also a. Uh, they were trying to change, I guess, some of the country's laws about, I guess, like the more devout. I don't know if it's necessarily like Has- Hasidic, but it was like the more devout right. kind of Jewish sects were 
able to be uh, left out of the war. They weren't required to yeah there was to a, do the service. Yep. But then they were going to start requiring them to, and they were like, "Hey, hey, hey!" Like, no, yeah. we haven't been required to do this. You know, yeah. For- I mean, that's the weird thing about that's the weird thing about Israel is you have this weird like the term Jew means a lot of things. Like, you can be Jewish by ethnicity, you can be Jewish by nationality, and you can be Jewish by religion. And they don't all necessarily line up, but some of them do. And the most uh, devout that are all three are the ones that are apparently the most pro or most anti-Palestine and most anti-West Bank settlements kind of set, which is part of the coalition that BB's trying to keep happy. Because, like, the super religious part of it, which, like, by and large, apparently, like, population-wise of the of the country, it's, like, 30% or less. It's, like, a ti- it's, it's, it's not a tiny, it's, it's not an insignificant portion, but, like, as a whole, Israel is fairly agnostic huh. as a nation, religiously, but ethnically and... Kind of culturally. And culturally, it's still kind of like that. It's, it's, a, it's a weird combination of things, like... like I saw a good. I saw a funny comedian. Uh, if you've seen, uh, God, what was his? What's his name? Kill Tony. You've seen the Kill Tony. Tony Hitchcock. A little yeah. bit. Don't really care for him. I mean, his stand up. His stand up's a little weak, but like the Kill Tony show, right? Which is like his kind of podcast live stand up thing, which is oh, kind it's of funny. Big. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's a cool. It's a cool concept. Like I like what they're doing, but it. But it's definitely like specifically intentionally like trying to push shit. Like that's his thing. Like he was great at the the Tom Brady roast. He was fantastic. But anyway, uh, he, uh, like, well, like the whole thing with Kill Tony that I think is awesome is like a lot of what they do is they're chasing down, finding new and up and coming talent. And they bring these guys on stage and this guy's doing his like five minutes or whatever he does on Kill Tony. And he's like, I'm, I am black and Irish because apparently black is a nationality. He's like, my mom's Irish. My dad's black, but apparently black is a nationality. He's making like, like the guys making the joke about like, his ethnicity is his nationality, like you know, like the 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 weird blur between nationality and and, and ethnicity that exists. And I thought it was, a, it was it was a great joke okay. that he that 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 guy made. He's just making fun of that part of it. It was good. Anyway, I don't know why that applied. So what else is going on? Anything else going on? Uh, That's something else local, and I forgot. I lost it. I don't think I've seen anything crazy locally. I think there was a story today. It looked like it showed a picture of STEM Academy, but I guess they've got a new program, and I think it said it was like the first in the state that had to do with like nuclear energy or something to do with nuclear. But I think it was mentioned it being like the first one, first one of its kind in the state. Nuclear, I like it. Good with it. Nuclear. Nuclear. Um. Yeah, I got. Uh, Actually, I think I saw a story yesterday that I, I meant to look it up, but it, they're trying to. And I think that it would be the first time something like this has happened. They want to restart a portion of Three Mile Island, which is in New York. Yeah, I think that's so. what thinking. Like, I know they had like a you know damn near almost meltdown. I started thinking. I don't know if they completely <laughs> shut it down after that, or if it's actually part of it's been in. In new sense, I have no idea. Right, that's what I started kind of wondering. I'm like, I, you know, I don't know what ever happened after that. If they just shut the bitch down and covered it in cement, and were like, "Hey, we don't want this to be another Chernobyl. We're just going to pretend like this thing never right. was here." Uh, but it sounded like it. You know what I mean? I'm all a complicated on board. process, but let's it sounds it. like they're trying to like restart at least one of the reactors. Let's do it. Let's cook some. Let's- which leads me to believe like it hasn't been. It's either been dormant for this long, or it just hasn't been functioning. Or they pulled the fuel out, I guess, and took pull it the rods. Out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I'm up, I'm all about it. Nuclear power, it's good with me. It's got its pluses and minuses. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I always, I'll always go back to it's like, you know, I, I don't know the details of it. That he's not allowed to tell me. But my brother was an electrical engineer on nuclear power systems in submarines. Right. Uh, when he was at the Navy, I have no idea past that, but you know, I mean, that, submarines are, are smaller versions, but you have nuclear powered 
aircraft carriers, which are small cities floating around the ocean all the time. Right. And, you know, like I always go, there's two things that, that I always go back to is one, an aircraft carrier is a small city. Two, same basic reactor, a smaller version of it is in a submarine, which the only reason the submarine ever has to hit the surface is to get more food and water on board. So that the, well, actually I don't need water, just food. So the people inside the submarine don't die. They recycle their wastewater? Yeah. <clears throat> and I think they could pull in some seawater. There's all sorts of shit they can do on that side of stuff. I don't know if they're doing desalinization on board. Reverse osmosis and shit? I don't know. I don't know exactly how that, that part works. But you, are they out, on, you can't desalinate water by reverse osmosis. Okay. Right. Well, I'm sorry I brought that part up. More of the story is the, the 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 power supply isn't the issue. Like the, the old school submarines were diesel powered; they had to come up to exhaust to charge batteries. Basically, they right. run the diesel engine to charge batteries so they can go back underwater. Right. A a nuclear powered submarine can stay functionally powered underwater forever. Right. As far as you know, at least the human lifespan forever. And the only reason they have to come up is for functional supplies for the human beings that are on board to yeah. survive and or not go crazy. Because I would be one of those that would go crazy. All right. I couldn't do it. There's no way. I think I did see the Navy launched one of the first uh, mixed mixed sex mixed sex uh, crews that was that was going out. I oh. guess it's something that I guess they hadn't done in the past, as far as having on a submarine on a submarine. Yeah, I can see how like I can see how that would be a, a a situation that avoided if possible. Yeah, has been kind of the stance. <laughs> I mean, it's something that still happens. It's an issue that the you know, armed services that they still deal with. I mean, yeah, and it's going to always. I, I mean, I assume it's going to be on these subs too, at some at some level. Right. It's, it's it's you know, I don't know. That's that there there is some you know evolutionary requirements that are running through human, the human system that when you trap people in a place together for a while. I mean, that's not a valid excuse for me, but sure. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying it's the reality. Okay. So to 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 a uh, whatever. I don't know. I wanna... Yeah, I'll start that fight. Fine. Um, yeah, there's a there's a reality of the fact that you put a bunch of people in a confined place in, for a continuous period of time. Um, if I okay, let me put it this way: If I were trying to design a system to minimize problems, I would keep the gender separated. If I was putting people in a fucking steel tube in the bottom of the ocean for a long period of time, okay, I don't know. doesn't make sense to me. But I would, I, I, I okay. I mean, if if you have crew members that literally can't control their emotions, then you have more issues than just trying to keep the sexes apart. If you have people that can't control their emotions, I mean, we're you just putting them on there with all men or whatever isn't going to solve your problem. You're still going to have issues of fighting or whatever. If you have people that cannot, again, if you have people that just cannot control their fucking emotions. Sure, but two guys like, you can't just the say they're like, oh, this is just evolution. I'm sorry, I hear that shit like way too often. It's just fucking like the rape culture bullshit of like, I've, I've just, I've, I've got hormones and they were purdy. Like, I can't hurt myself. Uh, oh, okay, so that, that's, that's assuming that there, that, that this is a, force, I'm saying, I've, this I've is, heard this no, argument. It's assuming used. it's forcible contact. What, what happens if it's not forcible contact? What happens if it's, if it's, if it's um, what's it, uh, consensual? Don't, I, don't know what the, I don't I don't know what the armed services policy is on it. Similarly, they discourage it. I don't know if they. I'm sure outright, they outright, outright ban it banned. from from happening. But so this, so this isn't a rape culture culture conversation. This is two people having consensual action with each other against policy, right? And the backlash that that runs that that comes from that. Or you know, okay, That's even 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 the direct cons- consensual sex on board is going to cause issue on board. It probably. How so? I mean, assuming that it stays consensual long term and doesn't 
you know, shift over time or, I mean, hell, just on the front end of it being against policy. Right. Okay. You got two, two, two adult human beings. Theoretically. I, I agree. It, it's policy. How do you see that causing an issue on board as far as morale goes? Well, when, when, uh, the, uh, I mean, as long as when it's not leadership like a power finds thing. out and they have to stop it. Right. That's not going to go well. It's going to be a problem because you have, you're on a submarine and you're going to have to interface with that person. Um, Yeah, that would be that'd be a starting point. I mean, I think you know, I, I, inter, interpersonals of people are fucking hard. Sexual interface of people are even harder, and more complex, and more drama ridden over time. Right, and which you, is why put, they discourage it. In, sure, in the you ranks, in, yes, you put them in a still tube and you put them in the bottom of the ocean for three months at a time. Um, you're adding variables that you don't have to add, such as such as the premise of a consensual relationship springing up while you're sitting at the bottom of the ocean bored out of your fucking mind. So take the, take the variable out. I, I'm not seeing the issues you're trying to lay out to me. Okay. I mean, these are 20. I, I assumed you were talking. I, I was more just kind of talking about just sexual assault happening. I mean, that's in, that, that in and of itself is its own problem. And, and again, okay, so even on that standpoint of it, it's like, no, it's not excusable. It's not okay. You, Yes, you have a lack of control right. of your of your. That's sailors. why it sounded like you were trying to sure. say it was You're okay. Right. Like, well, but you have a lack that's of, what happens when you put people in a tube and, you know, you're yeah. human. You're right. And, you, and, 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 and it screams all sorts of things that you have a lack of control. But I don't know, just on a very basic practical level, if I could avoid – if I could take steps to avoid issues before they happen, I would take steps to avoid issues before they happen. Not excusing the issues that would happen if I didn't have the ability to avoid them. But yeah, sure. Why would I put it? Why would I add a variable that I don't have to add? I mean, yes, at the end of the day, they dudes could forcibly fuck each other, and that's a problem too. Yes. But why would I add a variable that I don't need to add that could potentially cause problems that I don't have to deal with if I don't have to add them? Not an excuse for the action. I'm not saying it's okay that that that. I'm not even they're, saying that it's okay that it's a that it's a it's a real variable. Women are just as capable of being a, a soldier or a sailor as anyone else. I don't, I don't I don't see any reason that we need to discount them just because like well it could maybe cause some problems if a person is a shitty person. So, man, I mean, I've tried to bring up some of the same arguments. I, I can't remember what exactly you said earlier. You know, maybe, maybe we shouldn't shouldn't allow people to do things for like you know, just because it, it could lead to other bad things happening. And I almost wanted to bring up at the time, like, wait, wait, wait am I hearing you correctly? It yeah, sounds I would like, like to, you. Are, I would like to go back and check the tape. On you were saying like that that like maybe we shouldn't do something because it it could lead to the possibility of something bad happening. I can't remember yeah. exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, I would really like to go back. We need to go back on the tape on that because I really yeah. want to know what we were talking about. Yeah. But look, the, uh, okay, so there's 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 a distinct difference that I need to defend here, at least, in that we, I, government, there's a whole bunch of different, like, it, it, the, the context of who we is in that statement makes a big fucking difference. We in the government is a whole different animal than we as the individual or we as the people. Right. We as a government shouldn't do much of anything, in my opinion. That's what I argue with to death. At that's that's the libertarian in me, or whatever you want to call it. We shouldn't be, and more importantly, we shouldn't be telling people what they they need to do as citizens. But soldiers and citizens are not the same thing. Government entities and private business are not the same thing. And so when I say we, it really it's 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 a contextual issue. Um, I will go back and check the tape, and we'll talk about it next week because I, I want to find out what I said we should do something to because I don't should people. I don't like to should people. You don't like to what? I don't like to should people. I just, it's not my thing. I don't, that's not my jam. I felt like it was time. Is that wrong? Too soon? Too soon? We can back it up. I thought I had it pulled up. Oh, damn it all to hell. Because there was a few I didn't mention last week. Because I was like, oh, man, there's a I know there was a bunch of, of yeah, good yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let's see here. We got... 
Oh, I meant to look at this earlier. I guess like the Ig no- Nobel Prizes came out. The I- IG Nobel w- winners. What, I don't understand what that. What is Ig? Uh, I is think it like it, the anti? Is it making fun of? I think it's kind of making fun of, but it's kind of like the weird, weird things. Okay. So there was the studies on pigeon guided missiles, swimming abilities of dead fish among Ig, Ig Nobel's winners. The pigeon thing's old. Maybe. That was like a that was a World War Two thing. Held less than a month before the actual Nobel Prize are announced, thirty fourth annual Ig Nobel Prizes at MIT was organized by the Annals of Improbable Research Magazine's website to make people laugh and think. Winners received a transparent box containing historic items related to Murphy's Law, the theme of the night, and a nearly worthless Zimbabwean $10 trillion bill. Actual Nobel laureates handed the winners their prizes. So what's the pigeon one? Uh, let's see here. Bring me the goods, buddy. Come on. Ducks. The dead one. There's ten categories, including for peace and anatomy. Among them are scientists who showed a vine from Chile imitates the shapes of artificial plants nearby in another study that examined whether hair on people's heads in the northern hemisphere swirled in the same direction as someone's hair in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> That's a valid question. I like that. What is, what's the answer? I don't think it mentions it. Let's see here. Scientists have showed that fake medicine that causes side effects can be more effective than fake medicine that doesn't cause side effects. <laughs> uh, it doesn't talk about the pigeon one. Oh, that's on the headline. You can't fucking leave the headline out. What the fuck? I mean, it just mentions that that was, I guess, one I of the I remember many. seeing a thing on pigeons where they, they taught pigeons... To peck, yeah, I think it was a torpedo, not a missile. And so they would take a. Uh, they had an image of a like a like a of of the horizon with water and a boat. And they'd always put the 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 food on the boat, and they would peck. When they pecked at the boat, they would get food. They would peck at the boat, they'd get food. They peck at the boat, and so like literally in the warhead, they would put the pigeon. And wherever the pigeon pecked would adjust which direction the torpedo was moving. And so they would peck at the boat, they would peck at the boat, and it would adjust the fins on the torpedo to move the, to keep the direction going towards the... All right, keep it on target. Yeah. It's pigeon-guided missiles, or pigeon-guided torpedoes, that's a thing. Let's see, we got jurors help detain a man who flees a man courthouse in handcuffs. Man... Convicted of assaulting a child, tried to flee a courthouse in Maine, but two jurors and a detective quickly foiled the escape attempt. He had been found guilty of aggra- aggravated assault. He was so. Did he, was he fleeing prior to his verdict or post? Uh, let's see. Here. Like the jurors found him guilty and then chased him down. Because I'm thinking, if you tried it to run, like before- it was after the fact. Yeah, he had been found guilty. Okay. I was going to say, if you try to run before the verdict came out, I'm pretty sure you <laughs> kind of ruin your chances of yeah. getting, a, getting a non-guilty yeah. on there. Yeah, it sounded like after the fact. Yeah. Racing down the hallways in handcuffs and dodging an individual who attempted to block him. He can then be seen fleeing the courthouse, chased by several other individuals. Additional video shows running across the parking lot and eventually appearing to trip and fall in a yard where two jurors and a detective apprehended him. Yeah, he had been found guilty after a three-day trial. Since sentencing for the hearing is expected in the coming weeks, so he had been found guilty, but hadn't been hadn't even been sentenced yet. Try to book it. Good job, buddy. Made, made his one last escape attempt. I wouldn't want to. I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. Eight year old Ohio girl drove an SUV on a solo target run. Ah, uh, I think I heard this story. Did we talk about it? I don't think so. I think I heard this story. She ended up wrecking on the way there, right? Uh, I think so. It's not like she made it. Drove for miles to a store where she was later found unharmed. How was the car? Let's see. It was reported missing Sunday. Family members said they'd last seen the girl at the residence about two hours earlier. Police lost an investigation. Been spotted driving 
vehicle nearby road. Let's see here. It went to a Target store, which is 13 miles from her home. Damn. She found the... Did you get a ticket for driving without a license? Showed officers she had struck a mailbox while driving, but nothing else. Not bad. Doris did not say why she had decided to travel to the store or provide further details about her trip. The girl is too young to be charged criminally. Police said it wasn't clear Monday if any charges would be filed in the matter, which remains under investigation. I mean, she should have a she should get a ticket for driving without a license. It could be more on like her parents or guardian for like lack of any kind of like oversight. I mean, I agree with that it's too. Like child endangerment, like, yeah. pretty much. But I mean, if she can choose to have an abortion, she can choose to. I'm sorry, that was bad. That was a bad joke. That was a bad joke, people. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, one more. Come on, hit, hit me with the good stuff. The one you've been holding back. Uh, yeah, it's just a weird one. Mets unveil the new grimace seat at City Field. Ah, uh, I do know a little bit about this story. Go ahead. Yeah, but no. Okay. That sounds kind of stupid. Some about like some guy had been coming in a grimace outfit a bunch as like a distraction fan. It had nothing to do with McDonald's proper. I think it's the moral of the story that I knew of it. Toy Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's not really any good funny ones. Oh, that was anticlimactic. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> All right, last Let's call. You got anything else? I think we talked about the bag of Cheetos. We did talk about the bag of Cheetos. That was crazy. A whole bunch um, of conversation. I think we about talked it. about the, the four-year-old that, that broke a uh, an ancient jar, but apparently it's back on display now. Good job. All right, good deal. Good to hear. He helped, re- he helped reconstruct it. Or at least watch them. Learned how to reconstruct it. I think Campbell's Soup is taking the soup out of the name. It's not just going to be Campbell's. I didn't. I thought they already did. I don't know if they officially did it. I think it was more because they own a bunch of other brands. So they decided, I guess, it's just kind of like rebranded. Is it just being Campbell's? Yeah, that makes sense. Lame. All right, everybody. That's the show. We did it. We talked about stuff and junk and whatnot. Exciting city happenings with a building that nobody wants, but everybody wants. And, you know, if you don't want something built in your next door neighbor's yard, then uh, buy his yard. Anyway, Almost Agreement, Almost Agreement at gmail.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, go to the website, almostagreement.com. Uh, check out what we're going on there. Uh, Holler Boo is coming up October 26th. Uh, food trucks, vendors, uh, derby drivers, we need you. Sign up today. Um, if not, just come and have a good time. we got a great concert. Uh yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's just fun. Just be there. Anyway, oh, screw it, everybody. We did a show. I'm tired. I guess. Uh, good night, everybody. We'll see you there.